Pelt, so he has to bring it out. He breaks the tackle at the 15. He's at the 20. He's at the 25. He's got some room. He breaks the tackle at the 30. Joe Joe McNair could go the distance. Steps into the middle of the field. 100 yards for Joe Joe McNair. He wasn't even going to return it. He took a step out of the end zone, didn't want to bring it out. And Joe Joe McNair has his third touchdown of the game. 100 yards to start the second half. Wartburg leads 48 to 0. And I'm going to quote one of my fellow, uh, one of our fellow night vision broadcasters. He made this point when we played against Co two weeks ago. Uh, my fellow broadcaster, Henry Powers, said he's a Swiss Army knife for the Knights, and he's proving that today. Uh, kick return for a touchdown and two receiving touchdown has been stout on in his defensive back position as well for the Knights today. 100 yards, what a way to start this second half. 100 yard kick return, and we didn't even think he was gonna return it. He thought about it for a second and went right down the sideline, broke some tackles and took it all the way to the house. 49 nothing Knights. And we go back, I wanna go back to that first touchdown play where we had, where Moore was getting pressured and just threw it up for grabs, McNair caught it. There's, I said it then, I'll say it again. There's only one type of player in this conference that can make plays like that, it's JoJo McNair. Only reason he ended up returning that is because he accidentally stepped out of the end zone. He had to, he gave himself up and turned it into a live play. So we had to go. Tight rope around that sideline. He almost, the first defender hit him up about, about the 15 yard line. Broke a couple of tackles, had a nice couple of blocks, skated down this near sideline towards us. Then when he got to uh, the other side of the field, had a lowest defender in his way. Shucked him off, went to the middle of the field, 100 yards for JoJo McNair. And now Adian Mohamedaga just kicking off for the Knights. And another touchdown for Wartburg, leading 49 to zero. That play took up 19 seconds, so that was a long play. JoJo McNair also plays defense. We might need to get a breather after this one. Here comes the kickoff. It uh, bounces off the 12-yard line. This will be returned. Can we get another bigger play here? Knights close in quickly, had a little bit of a lane to begin with, but close quickly as that Knights special teams. The tackle made at the 26 yard line. So we talked about Loris going into, this, going into the second half down 42 to zero, and now in the matter of 19 seconds, they add another touchdown to Warbrick's tally. So now it's 49 to zero, and things just got even more sour for Loris. They'll take over first and 10 at their own 27 yard line. Speaking of scores here, Peyton, here's some scores from around the American Rivers Conference. In the third quarter, it's Central leading Co 55 to seven in Cedar Rapids. Dubuque leads Nebraska Wesleyan 30 to seven. And then uh, the only other game in action right now in football is Wartburg and Loris with Wartburg leading 49 to nothing live for you here on Night Vision. On that first down pass, a nice play on first down, a quick screen pass, he gains eight yards. That pass is completed by Marty McGovern. Second down and about a long two here. So Loris has to go quick, that trailing 49 to zero. At this point, you just want to play for pride. You got a long season ahead of you. You want to get some momentum going into next week. Here comes the snap, rolling out to the right side. Nobody open downfield. A flag is thrown, he'll run, he'll get the first down. But a flag is out, and this could come back. This one was thrown in the backfield. And holding against the offense will negate that first down rush and will back him up. we will replay second down. One more score to note in the American Rivers Conference. I oversaw this one. It's Simpson leading Luther 54 to seven with 204 remaining in the third quarter. That's your action today in football in the American Rivers Conference. And Loris actually picked up the win against Simpson last week and deciding not even a close of a game. So Simpson bounces back and beats Luther, and they're leading 54 to seven. So after that holding, it's a 10 yard penalty. It makes it a second down in 12. Would have been a first down rush had that penalty even not been thrown. More pressure, they gotta get this one out quick. It is completed. This one dumped off to the running back, and it picks up a couple. That was Ty Bosch picking it up on the catch. Dylan Steen, the tackle for Warburg. And that brings up another third down and long. Loris has been in the third and long a lot today. This nice defense has been all over the place.
So third and long here for Loris. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Here comes the pass, stepping up. He has the defender behind him, he's gonna have to throw it deep. He has the man wide open, and he can make him a catch. And he had, looking at my numbers here, that was Javon Williams, a sophomore out of Tampa, Florida, wide open. The throw just off the line and incomplete. And now we'll get a, another offensive foul, offensive penalty against Loris. So a three and out for uh, the Dewhawks to start this second half and uh, needed a more established drive there. Not what they needed right there. No, that penalty will be declined, so Loris will come in and punt. So like you said, yeah, not a good start to the second half. Two offensive penalties wipe out any chance of a good possession. Here comes a big pump return for the Knights. Could this be another special teams touchdown? This is Hunter Clausen. See you later in the end zone. The points just keep coming here at Walson Hoover Stadium. Two special teams touchdowns to start the day. JoJo McNair goes 100 yards on the kick return. And that power turn goes over 50 yards for Hunter Clausen. Actually, that was Ben Bryant. Ben Bryant, number yep. 21. Yep, he had uh, started the year as the punt returner for uh, the Knights and uh, getting a chance to do some punt returning to give McNair a break here in this second half. But uh, similar to McNair, he's got some speed and able to uh, take that one to the house. Two big returns to start this second half. But I see we have a missed extra point. The first missed in quite a while there by Eagle. Well, if you look at the flags there in the southeast corner of the end zone on campus there in the stadium, they are blowing heavily and it's catching up on the kickoff. It's catching up there on that extra point. That's the first extra point missed by Kane Eagles. Had a really solid day, and it's just tough to kick in these conditions here. You see the flags also on top of the goalpost there waving back and forth. It's a windy day down here, especially down on the field. So that extra point is no good. It makes the score 55 to zero rather than 56 to zero. But still, less than two minutes here in the third quarter, Warburg has 13 points and two touchdowns, and both coming on the special team side. It's just been a great day for Warburg football in all three facets, offense, defense, and it's like he's just seen so far in the third quarter, special teams as well. So Adian Mohamedagic will come back to kick out for the Knights. And this Warburg, excuse me, this Warburg defense has, and a one downside of scoring so quick as their defense has to go right and throw them back out there. But uh, they'll take those two touchdowns. And uh, they're now up big, even more so than they were at halftime against Loris. We mentioned it in pregame, Loris has not defeated Warburg since 2004. It's been six stream, 16 straight games, a uh, one for Warburg. That ball was fielded in the field of play, but he stepped out of bounds at the 15 yard line. So another mistake there by Loris. He kind of waited to see if that was gonna go out of bounds. It wasn't going to, but by the time he caught it, it was so close to the out of bounds line, he ended up stepping out. And he could have picked up some bunch needed yards instead. Stepping out the 15 yard line puts his offense in an even bigger uh, hole here. Again, it's home time, or excuse me, it's a half coming here in Walston Hoover Stadium here in Waverly. And it's been a big surprise for this Warburg faithful who came out to visit today. Warburg leading 55 to zero. Loris gets the ball back. Sigworth, the quarterback, having a rough day so far in his first game back from injury. It was a game time decision, and now a delay a game. I don't want to speculate too much, but on the other, especially on the opposing team, but I don't know what's going on with this Loris team. They just look flat. They came out in the second half, not really fired up. You would think that, you know, you would hope that, at least if you're a, a Loris fan, you would think that getting, you know, down 49 to 0 at halftime would make you want to come out hungry and want to fight but they let up two special teams touchdowns in on the first play of that drive here. It's a delay of game. They had two penalties on the last play, the last drive. Now they're backed up at their own 10, first and 15. They run a little bit of an option here. They pitch it on the outside. This is gonna go for a rush behind the line of scrimmage for a tackle for loss. 
Jay, or excuse me, Ty Bosch, the ball carrier there, loses another yard, loses about two yards. So now it's a second down and 17. Backed up at their own eight yard line. In dangerous territory here that uh, Knights defense can really pick things up, but he'll Siegler. get it out. Seagrath, a long throw, it is completed. Moves it back to the, close to the original line of scrimmage. A little bit past that. And that makes this a manageable play here. On second and 17, they pick up 14. So third and three doesn't look so bad now. Third and short for Lorish, trailing 55 to zero in the third quarter, 12-20 remaining. Seagriff will take the snap, he'll throw on third and three. Seagriff looking deep and long, out of bounds and incomplete. And we'll see what Loris does here. It's a short line to gain, but they will punt back in their own territory. And if you're the special teams here for the Dewhawks, you want to avoid kicking it to anyone. So we'll see uh, what their strategy is to avoid giving uh, Ben Bryant back in uh, coverage for the Knights an opportunity to get a return on this. The problem is there's so much pressure they have to get it right away. You can't really, ha and they, another missed tackle here. We'll see what happens. They finally get after him this time. But there's been a lot of pressure on that, uh, that offensive line of Loris on that special teams on the punt. So they haven't really had a lot of time to, you know, roll out and angle that punt. They've kind of just had to get that snap and punt it off right away. But able that time to swarm around Bryant. He did miss a tackle or two, but still a convoy of D-Rock defenders got him there and tackled him there right away. So it's first and 10 at Wartburg's 36-yard line. First look we've seen from this Wartburg Knights offense here in the second half. More the quarterback. We'll hand it off on first down. He cuts back and picks up a nice gain on first down. That is the running back. That is Austin Griffin, the ball carrier. The senior running back. A gain of eight yards for Griffin on first down. And I believe now in at quarterback for the Knights is Niall McLaughlin, the junior from Eldridge. A short day for Jace Moore, and he gets a whole second off, a second half off. And as you just mentioned, yes, now McLaughlin, the junior backup quarterback, comes in 6'2 and 204, and that pass is completed to Farrell for a first down. That's one of the benefits of being up by a good amount of points. You give players that normally wouldn't play every day an opportunity to get out on the field, and that's really good for their experience as they get to the point that they can have an opportunity to start as well as they progress through their college football career. Especially for a nice team that going into the season hadn't played in two years. We had spring football last year in the American Rivers Conference, but Warburg due to COVID issues and players uh, not, uh, with COVID could not play in any games last year. So coming into the season, it had been two years since they had played a football game. And like you said, getting up big like this, it gets players who you know, came into the program two years ago who now find themselves in their third year have had, you know, haven't maybe really got any playing time. A run there for a gain of one on first down. Ball is at midfield, second down and nine for McLaughlin. McLaughlin will throw out a quick pass, a gain of about four on second down. Makes it about third down and five. Dalton Woodyard on the reception for the Knights. Couple of big catches for him today. The third reception of the game. Third down and five at the Loris 46 yard line. Warburg leading 55 to zero with just over 10 minutes here in the third quarter. McLaughlin will throw a roll to the right side. Has a defender in his face. Gonna have to get rid of it. Throws it coming back. A nice catch. It's hard to see here if that Warburg sideline and they rule him out of bounds, incomplete. That pass was intended for the wideout. 